Hey, what up? How's everybody doing this Wednesday? I realize today is St. Patrick's Day as well. <laughs> but uh, anyways, hope you guys are doing well. We are continuing Robotics Notes today. And a bit later, I'm going to be also continuing Mario 3D World. So, not really going to do too much talking. I kind of just want to get into it already. Because, you know, I'm on, a, I'm on a schedule. But, I hope everybody's doing well. What's up, Jay? Glad to see you, bro. Uh, last we left off on this game here, I played it on my 12-hour uh, marathon stream, and uh, it seemed pretty interesting. They were building the. There were two uh, club members that were building a giant Gundam together, and so I think the last time we left off here, we made a bet with the fucking head principal that if we win the competition we win the upcoming we win the upcoming competition that they got set up for the entire uh the entire town if we win we keep our club but if we lose it's over so i'm gonna continue here let's see daily records hmm. all right let's just load game here I think uh, this is the right one. Okay. Trying to get my stream together. I think I fixed it. Nice, bro. You you thinking about uh, testing it out later? Let's see. I leave the savage atmosphere of the faculty room and take a deep breath. This is real bad. I think to myself as I rub my exceedingly empty stomach. Hmm. <clears throat> Akiho still has a stern expression on her face, standing with her fists clenched tight. I don't want Akiho to push herself too hard. Neither of us are in a physical neither of us are in the physical condition for that. Akichan, how about we grab some grub? I'll win no matter what. That's not gonna happen. How could we possibly just show up and win? I saw the New Year's Eve tourney online, and the robots were all incredible. Robo 1 isn't something you can just join and win on a whim. We have literally nothing working in our favor right now. Damn, damn, quite the pessimist, aren't you, Kaito? It's not possible, Aki-chan. We're a no-go on the go, we're a no-go on the go, no-go decision. I repeat myself just to confirm it. The robot club's finished. It's impressive that we held out this long. I want Akiho to give up. Damn, bro. Some friend you are. There's nothing wrong with taking it easy. The moment you give up is the moment that achievable dreams become unachievable. Aki-chan, we don't even have a hobby robot. Oh? I can tell by the look on her face that she's finally realized that simple fact. You seriously accepted the VP's terms without thinking about them? Oh yeah, the vice principal, not the head principal. K Kai, what should we do? Don't ask me. Jeez, you're so lazy. At this rate, the club's gonna be broken apart. <sighs> Wait, no, no! I won't give up. It's fine. It'll work out. After all, positive thinking is my only redeeming quality. Akio slaps both of her cheeks in, attempt <laughs> in an attempt to pump herself up as she tries to convince herself it'll all be okay. Storm and Surge! Blast of Spirit! Gun Veril! G Kaijin! Oh, Jack. Oh, well, whatever. I fucked it up already. In the middle of the hallway, she suddenly thrusts her fist into the air. Come on, you can do it too. You do it too, Kai. Storm and Surge! No thanks. Mm. Come on, do it! Not happening. It's way too fucking embarrassing. Everyone around us is giving us looks. Some recognize us as the Robot Club and immediately understand. If you want me to do it, face me and kill Ballad. Oh man, he's doing this shit again. No way. In that case, I'm going to buy lunch. See ya. Wait, y'all not going together? Damn. My stomach is at its limit, so I leave Akio and hurry off. Oh, okay. Blast of Spirit! 
gun barrel. To be honest, I'm not seeing much spirit. I open my umbrella and make my way toward the convenience store. Dreams, huh? Akio's dream is to enter Gunvero Prototype Model 1 into the expo and win the Grand Prix. It's fine to have dreams, but... Right now, we're like frogs in a well. Hell, even down in a well, you wouldn't feel this sucky. Having your dreams come true is great and all. But if everyone's dreams came true, the world probably wouldn't run right anymore. Only a handful of people can make their dreams come true. The overwhelming majority of people in the world have no choice but to give up on their dreams. I'm no exception to the rule. Akio was willing to push herself to the limit from the very beginning. She's the type who charges into things face first without even considering her body's condition. That's how she's always been. To be honest, I want to hold her by the back of her collar and stop her. Damn, bro. I'm starving. Wait, the bell's ringing? Is lunch break already over? I don't have time to go. I don't have time to go to Mitsuko-san's store. This sucks. As soon as I complain, my stomach growls again, and I dejectedly return to the classroom, hungry. Hmm. After school, I plant myself firmly in the empty classroom and munch on some bread while diving deep into KV. Akio went off to Akio went off with uh, Michi somewhere and hasn't come back. During our afternoon classes, she seemed to be there in body but not spirit. I hope she's okay. As the only other member of the robot club, I should be I should really be there for Akio, but in truth, I don't actually want to help. Whoops. This is clearly a trap laid by the VP. We have no way of coming out on top in this, so my efforts would be wasted. Hmm. Damn, this guy's such a pessimist. Between matches, I stretch out and cast my gaze out the window. Stopping by real quick during work was good, everyone. Was what was wrong with the stream, Dre? Got glad you got it fixed. Yo, what's up, Sora? It's good to see you, bro. Hope work's going good for you, fam. Thank you for stopping by as well. I appreciate it. Huge raindrops fall from the sky relentlessly. What should I do? I'm certain Akio isn't just going to take this sitting down, so I need to come up with a plan of my own. My number one priority is to keep Akio from pushing herself too hard. Hmm. I should go before it really turns into a downpour. At the end of the day, it's common for people to keep putting off the problems that are right in front of them. Now that's a true sentence if I've ever heard one. Whoa, way too damn expensive. I can't help but voice my thoughts. Since it's lunch break, I'm chowing down on some food while looking over a hobby robot site. It's a URL that Akio sent, but I draw back on my seat just looking at some of the numbers on the screen. These prices aren't something a high school student can afford. Yeah, just saw, yeah, brother, just saw the notification on Twitch. How's the game? This is a visual novel. Yep, it is. It's very interesting so far. It's basically about um, two members of a... D Two members of a quote-unquote dying club, they're trying, well, they're trying to uh, build a giant Gundam together as like a long-standing project that was held out by previous members. Hey, hey, happy half the week almost over. Yep, what's up, Potter? Good to see ya. The cheapest one is around 30,000 yen. When you look to the high end, some robots go for over 200,000 yen. Those are pre-made kit. Those are pre-made kits, after all. It's normal. They're essentially finished products. But still, but still, they're way cheaper than they were five years ago. Akio had already finished her own lunch and stands imposingly in front of my desk as she explains. If you, if you get the parts and build it yourself, it'll be even cheaper. Is that what you plan to do? With only two weeks left, there's no time for that. Akio sadly looks up at the ceiling. Then you're going to buy a kit and... That's not possible either. I asked my mom yesterday for an advance on my New Year's money, but she said she's only willing to do 10,000 yen. The bottleneck is the lack of time before the competition. We don't even have time to work on to work part-time jobs. Then it's seldom. Robo-1 is a no-go. 
You big jerk. Ah, Akiho starts messing up my hair again. I have a confession to make. I feel like people have hate Rob, but I don't care. Hate who? Sorry, Potter. I'm gonna need more details on that. <laughs> uh, two strands of my hair fall into the rice in my lunchbox. Ew! Ew! Oh, come on. Well, there goes his lunch. I quietly pluck them out with my fingertips. Don't do that while I'm eating. Why are you always so quick to give up, Kai? We need to struggle more. Well, if you hurry and come up with a solution, I'd be fine and dandy with being more positive. I'm saying this because I have come up with one. Oh, really? Akio puffs up, Akio puffs up her chest in pride. So that explains her happy-go-lucky mood this morning. All right, Madam President, tell me what the plan is. You want to know? If you do, then you have to beat me in a match of kill ballot. I'm down. It's not like I have any chance of losing to you. I was just trying to copy you is all. Jeez. I shrug my shoulders and put a rolled egg in my mouth. Anyway, listen up. We're going to revive the honorary prez. Huh? I end up swallowing the barely chewed egg in my mouth. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, Robin Smash. Oh. <laughs> Great idea, right? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, well. Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, damn. Just brushed past all of that. <laughs> Professional. Please don't tell me you're referring to the same Tanagashi Machine 3 that's collecting dust in the club room. That's the one. The former Robo One champ returns after nine years. Get hyped! Akio thrusts her fist toward the ceiling, and her classmates showed her shower her in cold glances. It's true that number three is something of a legend. It's Misane's brainchild, and the very same robot that won Robo One. It's it now decorates the club room as the honorary prez. But to be frank, it's an antique. It was just lagging, sore. I think it's because. Because, uh, G-Sync? I'm not sure. Hmm. Since the robot room... Since the robot boom began five years ago, tech know-how has evolved. I doubt we could win with a pre-boom machine. Besides... Does it even work? It doesn't, but after an overhaul, I think. Hmm. I stuffed some sausage... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I st we all know. It's the food, guys. It's the food. I stuff some sausage into my mouth and make sure to chew it properly. And so... I really should have just read the whole sentence, dude. Oh, fuck. Well, do whatever you think you need to. There you go again. Acting like this is, so acting like this is someone else's problem. It's not like there's anything I can do to help anyway. Oh, you you fucking whiny bitch. This is Akiho we're talking about. She'll stubbornly try to fix that antique no matter what it takes. I'll just watch over her progress. You lazy bitch. After the sausage, I put a pickled plum in my mouth. D dude, I don't need to know what you're eating. Stop making me hungry. Its sour flavor spreads out over my tongue, and I can't help but pucker my face in response. Kai? Akio suddenly bends forward towards me. She's too close. Aki-chan, you too close, man! Aki-chan, do you want a kiss or something? No, no. You'll help me with the shopping at least, right? Shopping? For parts and stuff. Well, I guess I could. Also, give me one of your apple slices. I wish she'd get a clue about how the people around her feel. <laughs> Damn. Central Tanegashima High School. Hmm? The manual for Tanegashi Machine 3? 
Yeah, I looked through the club's inventory, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, I looked through the club's inventory, but I couldn't find it. After school in the faculty room, I crouched down and snuck my way between the desks to avoid the VP. Michi's desk is a total fucking mess, and it smells weird. And since it's been raining all day, everything's real musty. I can't help but grimace at the scent. Well, your sister made that thing, so... If it's not at school, it'd probably be at your house. Pro tip. You're not sure, Michi? Michi has a long history with the club. He was part of the association and was even the club's first president. When number three won Robo One, Michi was the one who took the award. There's still a commemorative photo by the entrance. And now he serves as the club advisor. That's why I'd been hoping he'd know anything and everything there was to know about the robot club. But... Now, now, do you really expect people to remember where they put something a decade ago? N not really, but... There you have it! This April, the robot club was moved from the tech prep room to the equipment storage space in the courtyard. Most of the club's inventory is still packed into boxes and stacked up inside of it. While I was the one who packed it all up, I honestly don't remember if I saw the manual at the time. Well, I guess progress is progress. Now I know it could be at home. All right. In order to pump myself up, I pump my fist into the air despite still being crouched down. Oh, and if I end up needing parts, you're chipping in. Since you're the advisor and all, I'm expecting good things. But, hey, little Sino... Hey, little Sinomia. There's just one thing I need to tell you. Huh? What? There's a certain saying. I really like it, so I want you to remember it well. Relying on others leads to no good. Do everything you can on your own, even if you make mistakes. You can wear those failures as badges later. What do you think? Pretty good, right? Are you saying you're not going to pay up? I'm over here doing my best to find a way to win, so I'm hearing him as so hearing him assume I'm going to fail makes me angry. This is part of education. It's painful to me too. I can sympathize, little Sonomia. Can you stop calling me that, Michi? Then how about you Oh fuck oh god damn it. <laughs> what do you say? Then how about you quit it with the Michi stuff? It's Nagafukata Sensei. Got it? That's quite a mouthful, bro. I can see why nobody calls you that. Pro tip: If you pay respect to your teachers, they might be more willing to do stuff for you later. Oh, whatever. It was a mistake to expect anything out of you, Michi. Bye. I hurriedly flee the faculty room. I'm fairly certain the VP was glaring at me the whole damn time, but I pay her no mind. The gloom and doom sets in as I return to the classroom. Uh, being club president sure is a lonely job. Up until now, I never really had much experience in leadership roles, you know, stuff like class rep or group leader. I automatically become the robot club president when I be become a third when I became a third year, but nothing's been going right for me. The reason our reputation is in the mud because of my beef with the student council and vice principal. The more I think about it, the more my stomach starts to hurt. Uh, it ain't over yet. I say out loud, trying to force myself to feel better. Oh, we're in her point of view now. Just now realized it. Uh. Oh, it's this guy again. Hmm. Oh, man, why did I have to run into him now of all times? I spent over a year trying to get him to join our club because he'd be a rad addition to the team, but... I still can't handle Hi Hidaka-kun. I've legit never encountered such a jerk of an underclassman before. Hey yo, Hidaka-kun, since you're here and all, how about joining? It's over, isn't it? Huh? You said something about it not being over, but it sounds like you're trying to flee from your club's reality. Ugh, oh, he heard me talking to myself. This is a wee bit embarrassing. If possible, I'd love to erase the last two minutes from his memory. Now, normally our conversation would end here. Hidaka-kun never sticks around to talk to me. But today's different. Instead, he's the one who approaches me. I heard you plan on entering Robo-1. How did you know? The rumors already spread around the school. Uh, oh, well, that's right. And if we don't win, the robot club is finished. 
It's hopeless then. Quick and to the point. Hibakakun's saying the same thing that Kai said. Is it? You can't know and is it? You can't know until you try. I happen to know a thing or two about Robo One. Uh, that's right. That's right. Hidakakun entered Robo One solo in when he was in junior high and made it to third. This is exactly why I was trying to convince him to join the club. How could I forget something so important? This must be destiny. I can feel my blood pumping as I accidentally voice my thoughts. I pay little attention to Hidakakun's cold gaze. Hidakakun, the time has come for you to use that experience of yours for the sake of the club. The moment I finish speaking, Hidakakun shifts his gaze in another direction. I follow his eyes and land at the glass showcase for all the trophies and awards that the various clubs have won. Among them is the group photo of the Robot Research Association back when they won Robo One nine years ago. Do you have any experience? Do you have any experience building hobby robots, Sinomiya Simba? Nada. Hmm. But I do have experience building much bigger robots. Well, to be precise, I haven't actually finished anything. You know how it is. And you think that's good enough to win the championship? I recommend not underestimating Robo One. His words bite. It almost feels as if he's. It almost feels like he's stuck a needle in my heart. It's a sharp, prickly sort of pain. I'm so shocked by his aggressive words that I can't say a word. The other entrants would have started prep nearly half a year ago. They'll be bringing their best machines. There's no chance that a third-rate amateur like you entering out of nowhere with zero prep could ever win. It's nonsense. I managed to put my I managed to put my emotions back in order then take a deep breath. So what? Are you entering the tournament then? No. You haven't complete. You haven't competed since that one time, right? Why not? It has nothing to do with you. He spits out his. He spits out his responses and abruptly tries to leave. Like hell, am I gonna? Like hell, I'm gonna let some younger, someone younger than me talk smack and just leave. I feel like a pushover. If I could just get one decent comeback in, and so the words just fly out of my mouth. For the record, miracles aren't things you wait for. They're things you make happen yourself. I hide my anger behind a calm expression, wiggling my finger in the air like a pendulum. You see that sort of thing all the time and you see that sort of thing all at the time in robot anime, right? Like Gun Barrel, for example. That's because Gun Barrel is for kids. It's it nearly bored me to sleep when I watched it. The story was absolute garbage, so I dropped it after season 1. Whoa, hold on. I can't let that one slide. My heart's ablaze now. I'm pretty sure there are literally flames burning in my eyes right now. Robot anime is all about dreams, hope, and romantic ideals. Okay, so maybe that one anime with him isn't at all about that stuff. But that's an exception. In fact, he's the only exception. That line of thinking is exactly why, despite the robot boom, Japanese robot anime is still treated like kids' fodder. We need robot anime with more refined and philosophical plots, more realism, and with a more militaristic feel. I don't want any I don't want any of that. Anime is supposed to get kids excited and hyped. Damn, I was just about to go on a ride with uh with Foxy, but it began to rain. Fuck damn. Feels bad, man. Hmm. <clears throat> How childish. You're not even worth debating. Ugh. The, the real robot stories you talk about have people dying left and right. It's depressing. Real robot? What's that supposed to mean? You know, like how we have super robots and real robots. Tell me your definitions of super and real then, if you have one. Um, I've never really given it much thought. I was going to write up to the cemetery and visit my dad but nope oh man yeah damn rain it's more like a kind of feeling you get I guess I guess real robots are the ones that seem like they could exist <laughs> I'll be taking my leave I know I've said this many times but could you refrain from speaking to me ever again 
I want nothing to do with the robot club. Hey, wait! I hurriedly try to stop Hidaka-kun, but if I do, this will drag out our conversation. And the reality is that when it comes to this subject, we're on two parallel lines that'll never intersect. With that in mind, I resist the urge to chase after him. But once my flame is lit, it doesn't go out so easily. Ah, uh, because he was a spoiled brat. I finally managed to shout out from the depths of my soul. Which of course results in all the students nearby having a good laugh at me as they head home. <sighs> Damn, dude. Back in the club room, I start to take Taka Tanagashi Machine 3 apart, but I struggle to focus on my with all my energy drained. I haven't ranked up. I haven't ranked up in a while. I can't help but whine a little as I cast my gaze at the Kill Ballad leaderboards. On weekends, I get to play KB without anyone interrupting me. I've gone many a weekend without eating or sleeping. God damn, bro. He's a true gamer. In fact, weekends are when I focus on increasing my win rate against the top rankers. The short path to ranking up. That said, I'm still in fifth place. Let's see. In the end, it doesn't matter how many times I defeat low-ranked players. I gotta beat the top to move up. But so far, I haven't been able to matchmake with any of them. Stop running away, damn it! You're in the top five for Christ's sake. Oh, we about to do it. We about to get it in. I complain to nobody in particular as I get ready to start another match. Kaito, come out of your room. I need you to deliver something to the Sonomias. I hear mom, Fumiko, age 42, call me from the kit. Damn, dude. Just gonna say your mom's first. Just gonna say your mom's name and age. My mom would have slapped the shit out of me if I said that. And it wasn't nobody's business. Mom and I are usually the ones home. Dad pilots the only flight connecting our airport and Tanigashima Airport, so he's away half the week, like right now. Ugh. Now she's got me running errands for her. Curse you, Mom. Why must you steal away my precious me time? Hey, bro, do what your mom says. And she wants me to go out in this crazy ass rain? Come on. Wow, this guy sounds like a bitch. Hmm? I slide my room door open, stick my head out, and yell back toward the kitchen. If you want me to run errands, beat me in Kill Ballad. Enough yapping and just go. I'm busy here. <sighs> As for what she wants me to deliver, tea leaves. She wants me to go share them with the Sinomia with the Sinomia family, since she got a bunch of the re since she got a bunch from the relatives. I keep saying Sinomia, it's Sinomia. It's all thanks to this dumb ass errand that I have lost three sets worth of combat time. Fortunately, Akio's house is right next to mine. Although, because of the farmland between our homes, I have to walk about 50 yards to get there. From the front yard, I can see that Akio's I can see Aki that Akio's room is the, on the second floor is lit up. Hello, Kaito here. I slide the unlocked door open and casually stroll in. Akio's mother, Auntie Tamaki, comes out. Auntie Tamaki comes out to greet me. She seems quite pleased by the tea leaves I hand her. I hear thumping noises coming from the second floor. What in the hell is Akio doing? Might as well see what's up. Curiosity, baby. So, I witness Akio's head stuck in the closet with her butt facing me. What? Hmm? Kai, is that you? What are you up to? Without answering me, Akio pulls out a cardboard box from the closet. It's a nice outfit. I'm looking for Tanigashi, Mach Tanigash Tanigashi Machine 3's manual, but I can't find it. And anyway, how many times do I need to tell you to knock? What if I was changing? More importantly, you got any candy? Ah, <sighs> in one ear and out the other. Akio gets up and picks up a pack of space candy sitting on the floor. Yeah, I got one. Knew you had some. I'll pay you back later. I've never returned the favor. God damn it, Kaito. Uh, this exchange is kind of like a ritual between the two of us. 
I came to her room and I came to her room to get a space candy from her. Hell, I'm probably the only one on this island who actually likes this shit. People don't seem too big on the flavor. Even Akiho thinks they're gross and won't touch them. The only reason why there are packs of space candy in her room in the first place is so she can give them to me. I can't even remember when this little ritual of ours started. But as long as there's a stock in here, I'll always be welcome to barge into this teen girl's domain whenever I want. We're weird, I know, but that's just how I happen to interpret it, anyway. You couldn't have interpreted it better, bro? Akio complains, but she never chases me out. Hence why I can drop in like hence why I can drop in like this as if it were my own room. I unwrap the candy and toss it into my mouth. The fresh peppermint flavor expands and stimulates my nostrils. How can people not like this stuff? It's crazy good. It's basically one of the seven wonders of the island. You know, every time I come here, I think about how extremely not girly your room is. Akio's walls are covered in old robot anime posters, and her shelves are lined with now unavailable robot figures. The geotags in this room are configured so that they don't display, but even if they did, you'd drown in robot anime info. Anyone who didn't know Akio, who didn't know Akio would assume this room belonged to a dude. How many times do I have to tell you? This stuff gives me love, courage, hope, and justice. I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it all as is. Ah, right. Well, I guess Akiho can do whatever the hell she wants with her own room. You're damn right, bro. I sit on the chair backwards and lay my chest on the backrest. So, you're looking for a manual? The box she's digging through contains small, empty figure boxes and towels with robot illustrations on them. Yep, since this morning, but I just can't find it. Isn't it kind of pointless to look in your room, Aki-chan? If it was here, wouldn't it be in Misane's room? You didn't see the tweet? Akio lowers her shoulders and drops down on her bed. I scoured through Misa's room all morning. And she didn't find a damn thing. Where else could it be? In the shed or dad's study, maybe. Either way, it sounds like a lot of work. But I could totally see it being in her old man's study. Hell, if it was her dad that basically made Akio into the robot anime failing girl, it... Hell, it was her dad that basically made Akio into the robot anime fangirl she is. His study is filled with robot anime DVDs, BDs, uh, and even antiques like LDs. Laser discs, bro? Damn. Akio lies down on the bed, face up. Can't even remember the last time I saw a laser disc. But I've seen one nonetheless. I even held one in my hands. Then, from that position, she stretches her arms and legs out. Phew, I'm already beat. I really wish she wouldn't push herself like this. It gets me worried. Then why don't you help her out, you dumbass? I mean, you don't have to compete in Robo One, do you? Huh? Winning is impossible, and if the club is done, maybe it's for the best, rather than struggling for no reason. What? Akio abruptly sits up tight and lonesomely shakes her head in denial. No way! If the club gets disbanded, it's all over. You might not be so invested in the you might not be so invested in the robot club, Kai, but for me, it's an irreplaceable. Couldn't you just keep building your giant robot privately? You'd be able to finally liberate yourself from that annoying VP of ours and work on it however you like. Besides, it's not like this has to get done while you're still a student, Aki-chan. If you can get it in the expo, great, but if not, it's not like you're gonna die. Instead of rushing this, why don't you take your time and build something high quality? Hmm. If the club build gets disbanded, gun build one will get scrapped. There's no reason for you to play by their rules. I'm sure you could negotiate a better deal. But listen, Kai. Akio just barely smiles. Why would you why would she smile now? As a mem as a member of the robot club and as a student. I want to work this out. And you know what? You're right. If I kept building it on my own, I might be able to finish it and finish it one day. But I think that's total but I think that's totally a legit way to go about this. But I really want to go to the expo as a member of the robot club. I want to accomplish that in the next six months, so no matter what, I have to. 
And it's still, and if it still doesn't work out after six months, it's not like I'm gonna give up right there and then. But this is the line I've drawn for myself. Akio's eyes shine with determination as she explains her motivations to me. So I almost lose myself in those eyes. It's all about the club, eh? Is this about wanting to cherish the dream that you inherited from Misene and the rest? This intangible thing that's been passed down from Misene, Michi, and the other founding members. Is that what's motivating Akio? No shit, Sherlock. She's been... Hint, she, I mean, it's literally been hinted at this entire time. Misene in particular probably had a huge effect on her. This is the robot. This is the robot club and gun build one that Misa built. Akio really does love Misane. Is this what they call a sister complex? Or maybe she still hasn't grown out of her attachment to her. Plus, a robot anime needs to be filled with dreams and romanticism. Akio says with a happy smile on her face as she poses dramatically. In just six months, we'll be graduating and leaving the island behind us. Most students from this island follow that path, whether they go to college or choose to look for a job instead. There are those like Michi or Mitsuka's son who come, to, who come back to the island. And the rest who don't, like Misane. Either way, once she leaves this island, Akio won't be able to just focus on building a robot. You said the other day that all you've got are bots on the mind. But you really are thinking about the future, huh? I wonder. It sort of feels like all I think about is the robot club these days. <laughs> I guess I understand how Akio feels. I'm not going to be a jackass and keep pushing back on this. Well, in that case, good luck. I'll be taking my... Just before I can say leave, Akio grabs my wrist. Hold up. Huh? Aki-chan? Don't tell me. If she's stopping me here, that must mean... Help me find the manual, Kai. I fucking knew it. You're already you're already here, so you might as well t so you might as well, right? You can stay for dinner tonight. You seriously intend on searching till nighttime? Fine, I guess I'll help. Plus, I get Auntie Tamaki's food out of this deal. Unfortunately, even after searching long and hard, we failed to locate the manual. Damn, feels bad. Phew. I'm glad it's sunny today. I think to myself as I remove my helmet. The breeze feels nice and cool, perhaps due to yesterday's rain. The school grounds on Sunday are quiet. It's been a while since I've come to school on a day off on club business. It's def my first time this year. Honestly, I would much prefer to be lying around at home playing Kill Ballad. After seeing Akio's tweet that read, I'm so lonely doing an overhaul at the club room, I came here. As soon as I saw that she was all by herself, I dragged myself over. What choice did I have? She'd be all alone. Look, my personal policy has always been that I never participate in robot club activities. But when it comes to everything else, I'll do my best to help Akio when whenever she needs a hand. Akiho and I are basically one body and soul at this point. We rarely do things separately from one another. Oh, damn it, Akiho. Have you forgotten about your attacks? Or maybe she's still salty about, be about me beating her ass in KB last night. She knows I show no mercy. The lawn in front of the club room is still damp from yesterday's rain. Too bad. Would have loved to lay down for and a game for a bit. And I can see Akio's back through the clubroom door. Aki-chan! When I call out to her, she immediately recognizes my voice and comes outside. Huh? You came? Yep, brought you this. I toss her a bottle of Skull. Skull! After catching it, she immediately raises the bottle up high in excitement and begins to chug it down. Seeing her drink it like it's a, the nectar of the gods or something is enough to put a smile on my face. A thin layer of sweat covers Akio's forehead. A thin layer of sweat co covers Akio's forehead. Fucking English, Steve. Oh, goddamn. I guess it's still hot inside the club room. Phew, that is the spot. 
My usual seat of choice is too damp to sit on, so I settle for a clubroom chair. Sprawled out on the table is our honorary prez disassembled. Akio sits in front of the table and begins to further take it apart with a screwdriver in hand. By the way... Shit. Couldn't mute. By the way, did you end up following... Did you end up finding the manual last night? As I was leaving her house last night, Akio proudly declared that she was going to continue her search. Yep, this is it. Akio holds up a notebook. Written on the pages inside of it are all sorts of programs and design drawings written in feminine handwriting. Is that Misane's handwriting? Bingo. Turns out it was in Dad's study the whole time. My prediction was spot on. That happened to be the one place he we didn't search last night. Think you can fix the honorary press? We'll see. I have to disassemble it and get it to the root of the problem. And get to the root of the problem before I can make any calls. Wouldn't it be funny if it was just out of batteries or something? You joke, but that's a real possibility. If it's just a if it's just a battery problem, all I'd have to do is charge it. Simple enough. That'd make things a lot easier for you, Aki-chan. But see, the problem is that the charger is missing. Which means... We'll have to get a new one. Aren't they pricey? Yep, it'll cost more than 5,000 yen. $50? Uh, that really ain't that bad, really. For real? And these parts are over 10 years old. Finding, one, finding compatible stuff is gonna suck. It'll take at least a week to ship. Akio removes one screw after another in, a, in an orderly fashion while she explains the battery situation to me. The screws are all two to three millimeters. If she drops them, that's all she wrote. Are you keeping track of which screw goes where? More or less. Uh, that's extremely concerning. They're mostly the same size, so it's honestly not that big of a deal. She seems to be storing the removed screws in an empty snack can, so I peek inside. But there are some screws with slightly different lengths in here. Huh? Yeah? Don't give me that! She's way too damn disorganized. Well, worst case scenario, I have the manual. <laughs> God help us all. <laughs> and yet, I still have no intention of intervening. Kill ballad start. Oh, yawning a lot. Should stop that. I pull out my phone droid and boot up Kill Ballot. Fucking robot is calling me. Be gone, bitch. Alright, I think we're good now. So, other than the battery swap, what else do you gotta do? Um, check that all the server motors are running and make sure the server amps are stable. Maybe I'll go to the robot. Maybe I'll go to the robot clinic later. The robot clinic is a parts store that our club has ties to. As per its name, it mostly carries hobby robot-related parts. It's basically Akio's current lifeline. The shop owner is ridiculously terrifying, though. Oh, and also the program. I'm bad, at, I'm bad at that stuff, but I still gotta check it. We're not gonna win Robo 1 otherwise. The club room is hot and dark. Akio relies solely on the desk lamp as she tinkers away at, at the robot's small pieces. I hope she doesn't go... You know. I hope she doesn't... <sighs> Twitch, forgive me. I hope she doesn't go blind. Anyway, guess I'll start playing Kill Ballad. Oh, a little screenshot here. Akio disassembles the honorary prez. And I play Kill Ballad. The sounds of birds chirping fill the air of the island. It's just a relaxing Sunday afternoon.
In fact, it's so relaxing that it's hard to believe that the club is on the verge of being disbanded. Uh, hey, Kai? Hmm? You wanna try being an operator at one, Robo One? What's that? A robot's pilot, basically. If I give in here, my operation make Akio give up on Robo One would be all for naught. Time to go cold. Not interested. Oh, why not? Akio's round eyes peek at my face. Come on, you control robots all the time and kill Ballot, right? I don't play KB for the robots. I play because it's a damn good fighting game and there are strong players online. Before I get hooked on Kill Ballot, I was into all kinds of fighting games with human characters. Aren't you at least curious? Nope. Mm. But there are strong competitors in Robo 1 too. Hell, there are even one-on-one -on -one battles. I think you should be the operator, Aki-chan. You're the president and the one repairing the prez, after all. Believe me. Believe me, I want to be the operator, but I know you'd be better at it than I would. It's not like I've ever controlled a robot before, either. So we're on the same playing field. Yeah. Oh, shit, that was me. It's not like I've ever controlled a robot, either, so we're on the same playing field. Yeah, I guess you're right. She continues her task silently for a while. Thanks for the host, Peach. What's good? Good to see you. Hey, Kai. Hmm? I want you to be honest with me. Akio takes an unusually serious tone. Does she have finally realized that she has no chance of winning Robo 1? I stop playing Kill Ballad and look at Akio. What do you think, Kai? Tanegashi, Tanegashi Machine 3's design is super lame, right? Someone prevent me from face palming, please! I really couldn't care less. Why? This is so important. Misune designed it right. Misune designed it right. Send your complaints her way. But she lives all the way in Tokyo. So are you saying you want to redesign it? Do you even have the time for that, Akichan? <sighs> Not really. Akio looks displeased. Something's missing. Like, it looks weak, you know. I don't think she's designed it with flashiness in mind. But looks are important. It's easier to get hyped up when your robot looks awesome. We don't have an overhaul of it. Uh, we don't have to overhaul all of it, but we just tweaked it a little bit. For example, if you were the operator, wouldn't you want cannons on both shoulders? Cannons? Cannons. Would they even be useful? Cannons blow things up. In a Robo 1 match? No, just as part of its backstory. So how will they be used in Robo 1? They just be decorative. I'm good, oh my god, that was loud. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Just chilling right now. Oh, 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 shit. God damn it. Give me a fucking break. This one's on me for taking her seriously. So I was thinking how I'd customize it if I were the operator. Oh, oh well, just do whatever you want. I'd personally wanted to be wanted to be able to transform. Oh, and a special move is a must. If you implement all of that, you'll never make it in time for Robo One. A transform function isn't relevant to Robo One, and it'd be really hard to build. I was just joshing. <laughs> Then why even bring it up? I guess you're right. Figure out your priorities, Aki-chan. Prior to results. Results. Hmm. Color me surprised. Why are you being so quiet? Why are you being so quiet? Oh, nothing. <laughs> she's laughing it off, but it seems like she's finally realized how stupid these ideas were. Damn, bro. Glad you didn't say that shit out loud. Hurtful. Me and Akio return to our respective tasks. The robot clinic is southbound of Interstate 4858. Just after this intersection in entering Mina Minamitani Club. Minamitani Cho. Fuck. 
Akio often drags me here since it's on the way back home from school. Its location is a real pain in the ass for me. I feel like we're in a horror movie every time I come here. The neon sign forces itself into my line of sight like it's batting, like it's battling the setting sun. It makes me cringe. Even with the summer around, even with summer around the corner, I feel a bit cold around this place. The clinic occupies a single-story building. All of its windows are covered by plywood, so you can't see inside. Behind the building is a large pile of scrap separated by a fence. Feels like something might burst out of that mess. I'm sure it would be nice if this place looked a little bit, little bit more like a research lab. Yo, what's up, William? How you doing, bro? Akio watch, watches too much robot anime. Inside, rock music echoes through the space in the most loud and annoying way possible. This feels more like a nightclub or some kind of concert venue. It's always like this here, which explains why nobody ever comes by. Why rock music, you ask? That's just the owner's thing. It's dusty, gloomy, and messy. Scrap is all over the damn place. It feels like the owner has zero intention of ever tidying any of it up. Well then. Mm. I suddenly noticed that the man of the hour had, ex had exited the back room and was now sitting in the corner in silence. This old dude is the robot clinic's owner and self-proclaimed robot doctor. Tetsuharu Fujita. Hello, doc! Turn down the music! The old man grimaces, seemingly unaware of what's going on. Akio resorts to making weird body gestures in order to get him to lower the volume. The old man clicks his tongue and finally drops the sound down. This is how it always goes. By this point, Akio is usually drained out of all her energy. I stand by the door and watch without saying anything. Hello, Doc. I gave you parts the other day. I got nothing else to give you. And you over there. What's the deal dropping in after all this time without so much as a greeting? Shit, he's on to me. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. Long time no see. Thought you'd be dead in the streets by now. Unfortunately, I'm unfortunately I'm still kicking. This dude is the definition of rock and roll. Maybe, I'm not sure. Hey Doc, hey Doc, I didn't come on Gun Build One business today. Doc is familiar with Prez's story as Robo One Champ and Misane's brainchild. We're currently overhauling it, but there's a part I need to replace. Show it to me. Akio takes the disassembled parts out of her bag. It's the battery and the charger, and need the exact same model, if possible. Just as we joked about earlier, the reason the honorary press can't move is because of the old battery. If we can replace those, it'll at least move, apparently. As for how it'll move, Akio says that it will depend entirely on the maintenance of the, of the other parts. Mm, a Keisho battery, eh? And it's an X-plug type. Those have been out of production for a while now. Keisho battery sizes these days are different compared to the one seven years ago. You'll never find an exact replacement for this. Then what should I do? Hmm, let's see. You can switch out the plugs to make it compatible. The size has gotten smaller, so it wouldn't be a problem installing it. R replace the plug? Was that even in the manual? Plus, I'm not good with my hands. I'm not that good with my hands, and... Damn useless little girl. Changing plugs ain't no big deal. It's a wonder that you manage as the president. If you can't do that, you'll have to change makers. Press plug types, the Ogawadas are your cheapest option. Th then I'll go with that. It'll take about three days to get here. You're alright with that. W what about the price? 
including the charger, the cheapest model will run you about 8,000 yen. Whoa, whoa, that's way too much. Are you sure that's not for a brand new one? This store specializes in used parts. Listen to yourself. It'd be double this if it was new. That's with the shipping fees waived. So if you want to complain, wait till you know your stuff. Damn robot club. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Anything else? Anything else? Uh-uh. I was thinking of replacing the sensors, you know. Smart choice. Tech changes are a whole lot in a 10-year chunk of time. Hmm, so I wanted to go with an omnide omnidirectional camera. That ain't no that ain't no sensor. Don't tell me you don't even know the difference between a sensor and a camera. No, I was just thinking of combining our omnidirectional camera with a proximity sensor. Something like kinda high tech. If you put in if you put that in a robot one robot, it'll be a useless decoration. Ain't you ever heard of TPO, you damn idiot? Besides, how much do you think omnidirectional cameras cost? 50k won't even cut it, you broke-ass teenager. Damn, bro. Jesus, this guy is fucking ruthless. Uh, Akio's eyes tear up as her shoulders droop. The doctor is as relentless as ever against a young girl. To be honest, that's what I like about him. I myself am relentless when it comes to combat. Then tell me, Doc, what's the most important sensor you have for someone competing in Robo-1? A gyro sensor, I suppose. But if I replace the gyro sensor, I would, wouldn't I need to rewrite the program from the beginning? Ain't my problem. If you don't even know how to code, then quit trying to build hobby robots. I mean, if I put the time into it, I could. But our schedule is pretty tight right now. By the way, how much do gyro sensors generally cost? I recommend this one. The doctor squats down behind the counter and pulls out a part from the lower shelf. It's a new triple axis gyro sensor that made the Hong Kong company device this hero. I guarantee its performance. I'm willing to part with it for 40, for 4,000. Give me a discount. Don't be a spoiled brat. This is final. I told you before, I'm a pro. The prices I stick on my products are proof of that. If you're fine with that, buy away. If not, get the hell out. This is a scam. And that's that. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait! Now then, what's, now then, what's Akio's next move? Before leaving school, I checked in Akio 721 yen. I have 590. We can't afford anything even combined. For now, can you, could you order the Agawata battery and charger, please? And I hate to and I hate to ask you this, but can I pay you later? If you ain't paying, you ain't getting nothing. Part of his job as a pro at the clinic is to check each party's procured, and if needed, restore and make adjustments. Doc mostly hand Doc mostly handles used items, so he takes this work seriously. That that. That's what he means by a pro job. He also doesn't charge for the maintenance, which is pretty cool. At least that's what Akio tells me. Get your ass back here in three days. I'll try my best. Akio gives him a wishy-washy reply and bows her head deeply and exits the store. Well then. She stretches out, finally liberated from Doc's overwhelming aura, and even starts doing squats. What's the plan for the money? What's the plan for the money? We'll figure it out. Figure it out, huh? Hey, Kai, how many months worth of allowance can you receive in advance? You're trying to use my allowance money? You're a member of the robot club too, Kai. Didn't Doc just tell you not to be spoiled? If you insist on me making a contribution to your robot fund, you know what to do, right? I flaunt my phone droid at her. Fight me. If you win, I'll do what you say. Ugh, Kai, you're such a hassle. That's my policy. Fine, I'll do it. 
She challenged me two days in a row. That's pretty bold for Akio. She must really be backed into a corner. Right on. Let's begin. I won't pull my punches. Alright, I'm going to take a little break here. I will be back in a second. Hold on. Let me pull up something real quick. Let me see here. Okay, there it is. Alright, I'm going to take a short break. I will be right back, you guys. Just going to go handle something real quick.
Hey, we back. <laughs> All right, we back. I'm going to probably go another 20 minutes on this one, and then we'll switch, and then I'll switch to uh, Mario 3D World. Right on. Then let's begin. I won't pull my punches. Kill ballot start. Right. Here we go. Doc sure is scary. Really? I think he's a pretty nice guy when you actually sit down and talk to him. Even though he calls you idiot and stupid and whatnot? Well, that does kind of suck. Not as sucky as you beating me in Kill Ballad, though. You're right. It's not like I care, anyway. Ah, uh, you... Big jerk. Don't mess with my hair just because you're upset. And we win again. You got a long way to go, Aki-chan. Jeez, why are you so strong? I mean, I play this every day. We've spent... We've already spent way too much time hanging out in front of the store. As the sun begins to set, the neon sign begins to stand out even more, unfortunately. Let's get home before it really gets dark out. I'm starving. Roger that. Akio ended up giving up on beating me for the day. By the by, Akio managed to ruffle up my hair before I could even put my helmet on. Jerk. <laughs> wow. The nerve of this guy, bro. Oh, uh, this from Akio's point of view again? All right, this will be on the next test. In other words, free trade has these merits, but the reason why the WTO was established in the first place... Blah, 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 blah. I'm broke. Money, money, money. This world is held together by money. You need money to do everything. Plus, making a robot requires more cash than most things. Be they giant or small, they both require tons of money. How can a lone high school girl like me ever come up with some with that kind of money? Do you even know my monthly allowance? Three thousand yen. Like what? Thirty bucks? That's not bad. It's for a high schooler. Well, for being, for still being in school. At the same time, you know, people would, people here would normally have a job. Would normally have an uh, entry level job by then. That can't cover all of my snacks, clothes, and skincare products. I mean, thirty-three thousand yen for a senior is too little. Oh, for a senior though, yeah. Oh, I spend my pencil in my hand. And this whole Robo One ultimatum the VP gave us wouldn't be an issue if it wasn't for me asking for a budget raise. But now I have to spend even more money to prepare a robot to enter Robo One. What was even the point? Maybe Kai's right. Maybe the vice principal just wants to shut down the robot club. But I don't want to give up. I actually want to see. I actually see Robo One as a huge opportunity. If we win, we can accept our budget with pride. Nobody talks shit about us anymore. They'd all come around to us. That's why the most important thing right now is acquiring... Ah, oh, 12,000 yen. The money to buy parts. But I've never gotten that kind of cash before. Not even for New Year's. If I do somehow get in advance, I'd need my New Year's money and a few months of allowance. At this point, I, came to the realize I come to the realization that my brain is filled with nothing but thoughts of how to make cash. 
pummel to the floor with my feet. I wonder. I wonder if this is similar to what the C to what uh, CEOs of company are on the verge of collapsing feel. I wish I could just focus on my dream. What's wrong, Sinomiya? Are you feeling all right? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, okay. My anxiety grows stronger with each press with each passing day. Well, welcome. After school, I swing by the Ire General Store. As soon as I step in, I gulp loudly. My hands have been sweating for a bit now, and my knees won't stop shaking. Am I nervous, or is this pure fear? Mitsuka-san, who at this point senses my restless present, folds the newspaper she had been reading and sits upright. You ready? After giving her a small nod, I look over at the steamer resting next to the register. I'll have one of those. Thanks. mitsuka grins and opens the steamer. She takes out a passion fruit bun from the shelf. Come on. Come on, Kaito. Pretend like you don't know they've been promoting this thing as new for like four years now. It's a local delight only available at this location. Sure sounds nice on paper, but reality is a cruel mistress. This little thing is lethal. I personally call it the Destroyer, aka the Hellbringer. Passion fruit in and of itself is tasty as all hell, but as but as soon as it's a bun, whoo boy, something went hor something went horribly wrong. I heard that Mitsuka-san's father is the main is the man behind the monster. But did he, did he ever taste test this thing? It's fucking gross. The steaming thing Mitsuka-san hands me smells so ever so slightly sour. For reasons I can't explain, I tear up. Every time I eat one of these, my appetite gets annihilated for the rest of the day. Great for diets, right? As for why I'm about to eat one of these tiny disasters, well, it's so I can collect some info. This is a trade-off. Got to down it and oh fuck, he's gonna puke, dude. I've got this. Come on, put your fucking big nuts on, bro. I've been waiting for you to do it this entire game. If it, if not any other time, it better be now. I make peace with myself as I open my mouth wide and jam the. Th Kinda dodged a clip there. <laughs> the warm and slimy texture of the fruit pulp and the bun's grotesque appearance. The sour flavor that overwhelms the sweetness due to its warmth. <laughs> the more I chew, the more tears and snot come flowing out of out from the holes in my face. At this point, I can barely breathe. Actually, I think I might be choking. Nonetheless, I force the beast down. If I don't finish this thing, I won't get what I came here for. Mitsuka-san watches my distorted face with her usual grin. She's definitely enjoying this. My gag reflexes are firing on all cylinders. I somehow managed to hold it down. 
swallowing the mash in my mouth. Ew. Oh, come on, bro. Damn it. Why did I fucking say that last part? <laughs> Meanwhile, he's just over here like... Eh. <laughs> That's just what I imagine him doing. <laughs> without wiping my tears, I grab a skull from the beverage section and I guzzle it down without paying for it. God damn, dude. That's illegal. <sighs> <sighs> Fuck. I silently place 200 yen on the register counter and take some time to recover from the hell I just experienced. Up until a few years ago, sodas only used to cost 150 yen, but the economic recession hit hard. Tough price for a student. Come on, you gotta eat it like it's delicious. Actually, fucking impossible. Uh, whatever. The Passion Accord terms have been fulfilled. This is a special agreement that Mitsuko-san and I have between us. As you can imagine, it was named after the horrific terms that I have to uphold in order to get info. Mitsuko-san is kind of like my info broker. She's socially savvy and works here every day, so she gets to casually chat with faculty and students alike. Since she has all sorts of connections across the island, her giant social circle means she's well informed. And so Mitsuko-san secretly provides me with some info she gets her hands on. It was originally Mitsuko-san who proposed that I eat one entire passion fruit bun in exchange for info. The locals know, the locals all know how awful it is, so nobody dares drop in any cash on them. Its aura even keeps tourists away. And yet Mitsuko-san's dad still stocks them every single fucking day. It's apparently hard for her to get rid of them. So what's the jazz? So what's the jazz? You want to know Aki's three sizes or something? I doubt they'd be very impressive. So that's enough. Wow! Oh my fucking god, dude! Did he really just say that? Holy shit! The nerve of this guy! I'm gonna play it again. I'm gonna play it again just in case it didn't go off the first time. But that was literal fucking shots fired. Jesus. <laughs> he said, I doubt they'd be very impressive. Fuck, dude. You better not ever let her hear you say that. What I want to know is... <clears throat> a wave of nausea washes over me. And I hold it down, take a deep breath, and try to calm myself. There's still an awful burning sensation in my throat. Normal passion fruit shouldn't be this deadly. What the hell did they put in it? I want info on the robo doc at the robo at the robot clinic. Hmm, huh, that stubborn old bastard. Aki probably knows more than more about him than I do. No, I need to know his weaknesses. Something that'll make him want to give us a big discount on parts. Uh huh. Mitsuko-san slaps her knee in amusement. You're trying to blackmail the old geezer into a discount? That's flippin' hilarious. You got guts. Let me guess. This is for Aki, right? Sharp as a damn tack. She's just as tricky to deal with as Misane. It's nothing that... It's nothing that big. i just rather stuff go smoothly so I don't have to deal with the fallout later. Bro, just be honest. You're trying to help... You want to help her out. Stop being a damn tsundere. It's not like I'm doing this to make Akio happy or anything. I literally just said stop being a tsundere and look what he fucking says. Are you kidding me, dude? What is that timing? It's mostly just for myself. Yeah, sure. I smell some bullshit. How do I put it? I don't really trust this Akio Tsunomiya chick. Get what I'm saying? I'm really starting to question the nature of the relationship you two have. Hmm. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't like Akio. Yes, you do. Stop fucking lying to yourself. You prick. Man, when you think about it, Kaito's kind of a prick. I really think that we're of one body and soul. But when I say I don't trust her, 
I mean that she's unreliable. I mean, you've got no room to talk, Kaito. Plus, take care of Aki for me. A long time ago, I was tasked with this mission. All I'm doing is fulfilling the promise I made that day. Made that day. Maybe I'm pretending to be her guardian or something. Like, I'm replacing Misune for Akichan, I guess. Aren't you a gallant one? When it comes to both Aki and Misu, Misuka san lightly punches my upper arm. She's chuckling in amusement. When can I receive the info, ma'am? I'll call you when I get it. ASAP, right? I'm counting on you. Whoa! I suppress my gag reflex and exit the store. Lunch break the next day. I'm on my way back to the classroom after a quick bathroom run when my tablet runs when my tablet rings. What the fuck is going on up there? Receive call. Hello? It's about our little passion accord issue. Oh, Mitsuka san, getting it getting anything? you damn right I did. He has a granddaughter. Granddaughter? Interesting. Come to think of it, I don't know shit about Doc's family. Looks like she's looks like she's in the same grade as you and Aki. She's in class 3-1. Her name is Juna Daitoku, and she's in the karate club, you know. We met her. We met her. That's the one we was watching doing all those uh, martial arts moves in the gym. Wait, for real? We were in the same class last year. I actually spoke to her briefly the other day, too. Believe it, believe it or not, it turns out the old man is a grandfather from her mother's side. Grandfathers are weak when it comes to the grandchildren. You know what to do. Good luck. That's Mitsuka-san for you. I only took her one day to find something. The trip through the passion, the trip through passion through hell was worth it. How's your stomach feeling? So she's his granddaughter, eh? So basically, we gotta get Juna Daitoku to ask her Gramps to hand over the parts for free. Would Doc ever say yes to such a crazy ass proposal, granddaughter or not? Can't even imagine this playing out like that. Oh shit. This might end up biting us in the ass. He's hard-headed, but he's hard-headed, so it's likely that he'll get upset and say, How dare you use my Juna-chan? Bam. Banned. Either way, I should fill Akio in. What she does with the info is out of my hands. My role is just to show her where the path lies. Whether she walks that path or not is entirely up to her. That's true. This must be fate! Akio is eating lunch alone when I deliver the news to her. When I deliver the news to her, she immediately rises from her chair. Who could have guessed? What a small world. With the family discount, we'll get at least 30% off to start with. And if things go well, maybe we can push for 50 or even free. <laughs> that president, the president is a lost cause. She's not even considering a scenario in which this goes bad. But wait, how did you know about this, Kai? I caught a rumor during the rounds, is all. Hmm, really would have never guessed, especially since Doc and Daitoku-san have uh, totally different family names. Well, no time like the present. Akio swiftly closes the lid on her half-eaten lunch and heads towards Daitoku-san's classroom next door. Yeah, she's just, she's just jumping on it, bro. Oh, I think we're back in her point of view now. Juna Daitoku is in class 3-1, next, the one next to mine. I stealthily peek into the classroom. Daitoku-san was one of my classmates when we were second years, so I don't know what she, so I know what she looks like. She's short, baby-faced, and looks like a middle school boy. I'm short and baby-faced. And I've been told I look like a middle school boy. Nah, we not going there. We not going there. 
but still. Hmm, nah, we're not going there. She's in the karate club, but she's the only member in the entire school. Daitoko-san's family runs a karate dojo. If I recall correctly, she's been a martial artist since she was little. But due to regulations set by the inner high and nationals, she can't ever and she can't enter any competitions solo. Damn. So I guess the school made the club on paper so that she can compete. I hear this type of workaround actually happens in other minor sports too. So her situation isn't so unique. Anyway, that same Daitoku-san is in the middle of chatting with her friends by the window. Daitoku-san! When I call out to her, she gives me an appropriately surprised look. Nonetheless, I wave her, I wave her over as friendly as an aura as I can project. With as friendly an aura as I can project. She eventually hobbles over hesitantly. Ah, yep, there she is. Um, me? Yep, do you remember who I am? Sinomiya-san. Wow, you totally remember. I appreciate it. I grab that Toko-san's hands out of pure joy. Her hands are smaller than mine, almost like a child's. Even though she's a girl like me, my heart skips a beat at how adorable she is. I can't believe she knows karate. I actually have a favor to ask of you. What is it? I hope I can help. So, about Doc in the robot clinic. You know who Fujita-san is, right? Huh? That Toko-san looks stunned, I think. He's a relative of yours, right? Or am I totally off the mark? After a moment's hesitation, Dai san slowly begins to speak. He is, but... Cool, I'm glad I didn't get the wrong person. Did you hear that from Grandpa Fujita? Nope, just a rumor I picked up. A rumor? Anyway, I was wondering if you could convince Doc to give us a family discount on some parts. Family discount? You know, a family benefits type of thing. If you were to ask him, I'm sure Doc would say okay in a heartbeat. Please, you're the only one who can save the robot club. Wh uh, hold on! When I put my hands together in prayer, Datoku-san grabs my arm, flustered. She takes me to a less crowded hallway. Th this is all so sudden. I don't know if I can help you. All you gotta do is ask for us. If it doesn't work, then that's that. B but... The robot club is in a real bad spot right now, and if we can't pay Doc for the parts, the club will go bye-bye. So please, help us. I'll treat you to a bottle of scowl. No, please, Reg please raise your head, Sonomiya-san. So you'll do it? Uh, that took son fidgets like she wants to say something. What's wrong? I... I don't think I can do it. Huh? Can't say I was expecting that. But I mean, all you have to do is go see your gramps and have a little chat. Oh, is she afraid of him? That took us on visibly shakes her head back and forth. I can't. Are you afraid of- Yep, see? Yes. Are you telling me his own granddaughter is this scared of him? I mean, Doc is the stereotypical, stereotypically stubborn, stubborn craftsman type. And his taste in music makes him seem like a punk. I think I can understand why Dr. Toku-san is frightened by him. I haven't spoken to Grandpa Fujita in years. And this would be a great chance for you to reconcile. I don't know if I want to. Why not? He's your grandpa. Most people will want to pass things up in a situation like this. But I'm way off the mark. Dr. Toku-san hangs her head low. As if she's ashamed. Um, I'm preparing for a competition right now, so I don't want to lose focus. Anyway, I I'm sorry. Oh, and uh, please don't tell Grandpa Fujita what I just said, okay? Datoku-san, listen to me. When I try to stop Datoku-san from returning to her classroom, someone's hand slightly pushes me away. Hey, Sonomio, stop harassing Juna. Can't you see she's scared? Yeah, nothing good ever comes from getting involved with your crappy little robot club anyway. Oh, God. They're the two girls who were chatting with Daitoku-san earlier. They position themselves like they're guarding her. Juna has the national 
Nationals preliminaries this next weekend. You better not distract her or else. Go flirt with Yashio-kun or something. If you want to kiss, you got to beat me in a match, right? <laughs> I swear I'm not trying to harass that Tokusan or anything. W wait, guys. That Tokusan sticks her neck out despite the tense situation. Then with tears in her eyes, she looks my way. I'm, I'm sorry, Sonomiya-san. I can't help you, so please let this go. I'm really, really sorry. Ah, Sonomiya made Duna cry. You're seriously the worst. What a bully. What the? How can I not back down after that? I seriously didn't think she'd cry. I feel crazy guilty even though I didn't do anything. Hello, Doc. Well. I guess we're going to see how this goes next time. So let me save here. Alright, that's saved up there. We are now going to switch games. <laughs>